it's important to understand the basics of what a confidence interval is mathematically, formulaically, before diving into an actual example. So we're going to say the confidence interval is equal to the sample mean, x bar. Let's see if this works. Oh, yeah. Plus or minus the z-score. And inside the parentheses, we have a fraction like so. Get rid of that extra parentheses. And that's your standard error, the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size n. That's your basic formula for the confidence interval. So x is your sample mean, z is the critical value. This corresponds to the desired confidence level. And s is your sample standard deviation. n is your sample size. And what we're going to do is um, look at a study that has 10 participants. Let me make this a bit larger. With 10 participants. And we're going to look at their daily coffee consumption, where the um, number of cups that are consumed are recorded as follows. OK. So our job is to, A, construct and interpret a 95% confidence interval for the population. I mean, let's make this into a markdown cell. And so um, we'll start by setting up the problem, make sure that we have all our imports, import pandas as PD, import numpy as np and for this problem we're going to use scipy and stat so import scipy dot stats as stats run that cell and don't worry this is just a uh looks like this is just a runtime warning so it shouldn't affect what we're trying to do and then we'll set up our uh, observation space or data variable. We'll call it data equals these uh, number of cups that are consumed. We'll put them into a list of, I don't know, of 10 values or so. And we'll say zero for the first one, zero for the second one, just making these up one, and then zero again, then one, then zero again, then two, two, three, just random numbers. Okay, so that's our data. And our goal now is to, if we go back to this formula, just remember uh, what each of these variables represents. We have our sample mean, which is X bar again, our z critical value standard sample standard deviation and square root of the sample size n. So um, we'll begin by creating a variable for the sample mean, and we'll calculate it by taking the np dot mean of this data, and then our sample standard deviation is calculated much in the same way using np dot std, where our first input is data. And then we specify our degrees of freedom, which is one. And then we will take the length of our sample data, which will give us our sample size. So that's n is equal to the length of data. And then from there, we can proceed to 
uh, calculate the confidence level. Let's run this cell first. Below that, we'll create a new cell. And then we'll mark this as calculate 95% confidence interval. We'll create a new variable called confidence level. And we'll set that to 95.95. .95. Our alpha is, if you look at the normal distribution, whenever you subtract that confidence level from the whole one, 100 or one, in this case, since we're looking at values between zero and one, that's gonna give you your alpha or your significance level, which is one minus what we've defined above that, the confidence level, like so. And then the Z critical, we're just following everything in that uh, formula. It comes from stats dot norm this function and this function takes in one minus alpha over two. So then once we have that, we need our margin of error. which is equal to, by definition, our critical value multiplied by the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size n. Like so. And so when all is said and done, we'll have our margin of error and now we need to derive our confidence interval, not level, which is by definition, the sample mean subtracting the margin of error and then the sample mean plus the margin of error. And that should give us the confidence interval. We can create a print statement that says confidence interval for the population mean is the confidence interval variable. So there it is.